time of day it is, wherever you are, welcome to the Sneaker Shit Podcast. My name is That Dude Curtis, and you could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with me right now, and I appreciate that. You may know me from Steak Hop and Kicks, my main brand, but for those who don't know me, let me give you a little bit about me before we get into the topics today. So, I've been a sneakerhead all my life. When I was a kid, I enjoyed the fruits of a father who was a general manager for a shoe company. So, I got a lot of hype and heat for a long time. I shouldn't say a long time, but probably until I was about seven. So, between the years of like four to seven, when I really started to understand shoes, you know, my dad used to bring home the catalogs. He used to bring me home new stuff. I understood that, hey, this is the shoe that Michael Jordan or Bo Jackson or whatever player was wearing. And I used to get those shoes for the most part. Because my dad's model was I can get these shoes on a discount. And why wouldn't I get my son the best available if, it, if I'm only paying pennies on the dollar for it? Later on, I experienced that sneakerhead feeling of being a sneakerhead in your head only <laughs> because my, my dad no longer worked at that company and my parents weren't about to be paying $80 or I, I'm sorry, at that time it was probably like $60. I don't remember the exact pricing for grade school, but they weren't paying, you know, $60, $70, $80, whatever it was for a kid's shoe, a kid's foot. It didn't matter how much I took care of my shoes. None of that mattered, you know, because they understood that, hey, you're a kid. You're going to tear up shoes, even though I didn't. You're also a kid. You're, go, you're going to outgrow shoes. I have a, I had a pair of Patrick Ewing's that my dad had bought me that um, I never got to wear because when I got them, I was, they were too big for me. My mom wouldn't let me wear them. And then by the time um, I was ready to or going to try to wear them, um, I had outgrown them. You know, so I experienced that, and that lasted from probably from like nine, <laughs> eight, nine, till, you know, high school. In high school, you know, I got my first job. And when I got my first job, you know, we, we used to have the East Bay catalogs. We were all looking at the catalogs, dreaming and stuff. And when you get your first job is when you really realize that, Shit is expensive out here, <laughs> you know, so you start to understand a little bit why your parents are like, nah, I can't get that for you because you're like, wait a minute, for this one pair of Rockaway jeans, yeah, it was, I was rocking that Rockaway back in the day, Rockaway, Fat Form, all that stuff, but it was like, with this pair of jeans, I got to work how much? You know what I'm saying? So you started to be a little bit more careful with your money. And sometimes that trickled over to your parents and what you asked them for. But, you know, I started, like, this is when I used to, like, pick up older stuff if I could. You know, things that were, you know, um, had been moved to clearance and stuff in the catalog. So I'd, I'd get some of the older shoes, and I'd rock them. But if it was something new that I wanted, you know, I'd save my money up, and I'd get it. Like, I remember getting the, the Vince Carter um, BB4 Shocks. Uh, I think it was my senior year, we skipped school to go get it, and, you know, I was so hyped to have them, because I got the white and silver ones, and I was already the only person in school who had the white Vince Carter jersey, um, with the stitching, not the screen print, the stitching, and then I had the, the actual white and silver shoes that he was rocking with the jersey, you know, I was on cloud nine, you know, moving to college and beyond, um, my collection grew, and then I went through that sneakerhead phase that some of us go through, where we decide, I don't really have time to wear all these sneakers. What am I doing? And we get rid of everything. So <laughs> I got rid of, like, everything that I had. I maybe kept, like, maybe, like, four or five pairs, and that was it. Um, and from there, I think it was, like, 20... I want to say like 2013, I met my man Joe. We were both on the job, and Joe was a professional sneakerhead. 
So, he, you know, he had a professional job, and then on the, you know, business casual days, this dude was pulling out all types of heat. You know, he was pulling out KDs. He was pulling out Jays. He was pulling out retros. He was just doing it all. And I was like, dang, man, you're making me want to get back in the game. You're making me want to get back in the game. Because another reason I got out of it was also because, you know, my college years and shortly after was the height of when people were getting um, hurt trying to buy shoes. Whether it was people getting shot, whether it was people getting attacked, trying to leave the mall with the, with the bags, whatever. That's around that time frame. You know, so like I, I just got out of it. I was like, I ain't dealing with this. And, you know, the few shoes that I would cop over the years after that, it was like if I didn't get it online, I just didn't worry about it. Um, but I still kept my ear to the streets a little bit to see what was going on, what was coming out. And, of course, you know, I paid attention to, you know, what the athletes were wearing, so on and so forth. But anyway, Joe got me back into it. This is around the time when the rap, the raffle system at the stores used to be basically you show up on Sunday a week ahead of time. You get your raffle ticket. Your ticket guarantees you got the shoe. So you show up on Sunday. You wait in line for like two hours maybe. They give you your ticket. You go home. And then next Saturday, you come up, give them a ticket, and you get your shoe. That was, like, the easiest period, one of the better periods to be in Sneakerhead. But, again, um, just like before, people started wilding out in those lines for the raffle tickets. And then that went away, and we, we pretty much converted to what we have now. So that's a little bit about my sneaker background um, in my sneaker history. My Some of my grails are or at least were for a long time, the the Bo Jackson uh, Tecmo Bowl FC trainers, which I have now, the Watch the Throne LeBron, um, the Maroon Sixes. Uh, I'm trying to think what else off the top of my head. Because, again, it's, it's, it's been fantastic for me recently because a lot of my grails, I actually own them now, you know. So <clears throat> that's a great feeling because, you know, in the past, a grill was something that you were never going to get. And having the opportunity to actually get some of this stuff, I've been really blessed, and I really appreciate that. But with that said, let's get into today's topic. So this is the first episode of this podcast, and this episode is going to be a little bit different than the format that I have planned out for going forward. But I really wanted to attack this topic basically because of two things that I saw come up yesterday. So the topic of today's episode is the mid-agenda. And some of y'all may know what I mean by that. Some of y'all may not. But basically, the mid-agenda is this idea that the only reason mid-top Air Jordans are out there is because the brands keep pushing them and nobody actually likes them. Um, which I think is foolishness. But I'm going to get into a couple things around this topic. So yesterday, um, which was Monday, the 18th, Penny Hardaway's birthday. Shout out to Penny. Um, I, I jumped on social media when I woke up, and I'm part of this this Twitter um, sneaker community. It's called Soul Food. Shout out to Soul Food. Um, you know, make sure you put in a request to join if you can. It's a very positive place where people, you know, they just talk about shoes. They show positive pictures of shoes. Um, sometimes it's retail oops. And just some, most of the time it's good discussions. But, however, this morning when I logged in, first thing I saw was a post from some dude, not going to give him any clout, but basically dude was like mid Air Jordans ones are for people who want to be sneakerheads but don't have the money for the lifestyle. You know, so that statement on his face is stupid. And I'll get into more about why in a minute. But then later on in the same day, we had a post from um, one of the outlets, and it was a picture of a new pair of mid-Jordan 1s that's coming out that are going to um, – kind of looks similar to like the what they call it, the turbo royal um turbo blue whatever you know shoe where it's got that that suede look 
on the panels with uh, and then white or a cream color, and then it's got like um the Jumpman or not the Jumpman. Well, it is gonna be the Jumpman, but the Wings logo um are, is red, and they commented basically called it they called it a poor man's Turbo Royal, and you know somebody in the comments who I really appreciate, which I had his name right now, actually you know called them out for that, but I mean that's a problem, and. As sneakerheads, we need to grow the fuck up, for real, because I'm tired of this shit, man. I'm tired of people talking crazy and talking reckless about, you know, a fucking mid-top shoe that people like. I'm sorry, people like the mid That's why they sell out. That's why they are always releasing them. People are actually buying them. It's not just the fact that, oh, that's the only thing that you can afford. And you know what? Guess what? For some people, that might be true, but that doesn't mean that they're not a sneakerhead. It doesn't. Being a sneakerhead has jack shit to do with how much you spend on a shoe. That is being a hype beast. Those are the clowns that keep the StockX tag or the eBay tag or the courtside tag or whatever tag on their shoe because they want, no, they want people to know that they're a moron that paid over retail. So they're, they want to brag that they paid I don't know, five, six, seven hundred dollars for a shoe that was only one ninety. How does that make sense? It's stupid. The game used to be about getting the shoe at the low low. I'm gonna get these J's and I'm gonna get them under retail. I got a guy who's gonna give me the hookup, you know. Or wait or waiting a little bit and catching them on a sale. You know, yeah, I only pay eighty for these. They cost you they cost you two twenty, but I only pay eighty. You know, that used to be the game, not well they cost two twenty, but you know, I paid a thousand dollars. Like, no, that's fucking stupid. You know, and even going back to that comment about the mids, you know, and the guy talking about some you can't afford the lifestyle. What are mid Jordans now? One fifty? One forty? You know how many shoes that are in the lifestyle that are less than expensive than that? Dunks, Air Maxes, especially the retros. Um, many of the New Balances, many of the Adidas, the um, NMDs, the Asics. You know, it's so many shoes out there that aren't 200, 220, whatever, that people rock, that people make look hot, that are hot out the gate. But you want to try to play games and because, oh, it's a mid-top Jordan, so it's lame. It's not real. Like, no, nah, man, like, cut the bullshit. Because y'all are passing that dumbass mindset down to kids and stuff, and... I mean, it's, it's bad enough. Like, let me tell y'all a story. Like I told you earlier, my dad used to buy me all the heat. So when I was probably, let me let me do some math real quick. Um, I was probably six, maybe seven. Yeah, I think I was seven. I was seven. My dad got me the Air Jordan 6s, which is one of my all-time favorite silhouettes. And these were the, um, these might have been the maroon pair at the time. I can't remember if it was, because I had, I remember specifically, I had three pairs of sixes. I had the maroons, I had the infrared whites, and I had the infrared with the black. Um, but I think it was the maroon pair. But anyway, I came home from school, like seven by seven, upset. Why was I upset? Because kids were calling my shoes fake or saying they weren't right. Something like that. And you want to know why they said my shoes weren't right? Because they said Sky Jordan. Now, many of y'all in, 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 who are listening out there are probably laughing right now. Some of the newer people in the game may not understand. But I'll let me explain it the way my dad did. He said, see, 
Your shoes are real, son. Sky Jordan is what they call the kids Jordans in your size. You know, and there's a lot of people that don't know that, man. Like, I've seen it on, especially, like, there was this girl on um, IG who had a lot of OG pairs. I think she's around my age, so she had pairs from, like, her older sister or something like that. And, you know, many of them had Sky, you know, Sky Jordan on them, Sky Jordan on the side. And people would be like, oh, you got some, some fakes. And she's like, no, they're just OG. Yeah, like, the kids' Jordans used to not have an air unit in there. So they did not call them Air Jordans. They called them Sky Jordans, you know, until you got to a certain size. And then that size introduced the air unit and the higher price. And those were the ones that were called Air Jordans. You know, so I know that feeling as a kid of somebody making fun of your shoes. You know, that's part of the reason why that I have spent my own money on buying shoes for underprivileged kids in the community. That's why I've helped raise money for buying shoes for underprivileged kids. And not just regular shoes, but shoes that are, you know, um, what sneakerheads would deem appropriate. But I guess in some cases they wouldn't because I bought some kids some mid-top Jordans, you know. But we got to stop this, man. We got to stop this foolishness because... This mindset that, oh, you didn't buy the right $150 shoe, that's just fucking stupid, and it doesn't help. It's not building community, and it's building the wrong things. Like, kids don't need to be focused on that kind of stuff, especially when they're kids. They need to be focused on their education, you know? Especially when, like I said, these come from the same, same factories, same Nike Jordan branding on them. And they still cost a fucking hundred and forty dollars or whatever it is, you know. So this idea that oh, well, they fake because they're not one through fourteen in the original colorway. You got we gotta lose that mindset. We gotta lose any version of that because it's stupid. Because you know the fact of the matter is, you know they sell as much as they do, partially because of the price, and people like them. A few years ago, Kyrie was lighting up the sneaker game, and a good portion of that was he had the affordable basketball shoe. Not only was he an exciting player for kids, he had the affordable shoe. So kids wanted to have it. So, I mean, we got to stop admonishing people. And, yeah, so for some people, the, 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 um, the mid-Jordan one is an entry-level shoe. For them. Because guess what? It's a Jordan 1 you ain't got to jump through hoops for. It's getting harder to get now, but you ain't got to, you usually ain't got to wait in line. You usually ain't got to worry about resellers. You usually ain't got to worry about bots. You usually don't have to worry about raffles. It's a shoe that a lot of times you can go into the store and you can say, I want to get my first pair of Air Jordan 1s or my first pair of Jordans in general, and you can buy it. That's a good thing because that one shoe can be the spark that lights someone's fire for the community, for being a sneakerhead, for that feeling of camaraderie. And we shouldn't be admonishing people because they got, quote, unquote, the wrong Jordan 1. Stupid, man. Stupid. Let me tell you about a good friend of mine. This guy... Um, Never had a pair of Air Jordans in his life. You know, so I'm, I'm 39, for those who don't know, don't realize. And he's about the same age as me. Never had a pair of Air Jordans in his life. His first pair of Air Jordans was a pair of Air Jordan Mids. And when he got them and sent me the pictures and he was so excited, I hyped him the hell up. Not because I didn't mean it or felt it was necessary, but I did it because I did mean it. And I was hyped for him. I was excited. I could see how excited he was to have these jades. And I was excited for him because that's a cool feeling. It's a cool feeling to, to get anything like that. And then since then, my man's collection has blown up. Because he, you know, he got paper now. We're adults. We have disposable income. 
we have the money we didn't have as kids a lot of times to get the stuff that we wanted as kids. That's why nostalgia is such a big business. You know, so he, I mean, he's been able to cop stuff I ain't been able to cop. You know, he had the, um, the playoff 12s. I think he got the Flint 13s. Uh, and then his golf shoe game has been crazy. He got all types of Jordan golf shoes. Because he's a big time golfer and stuff. And he's like, yeah, man, I'm becoming a sneakerhead like you. And I told him, I was like, nah, bro, you've always been a sneakerhead. Because he has always been one. He may not have had Jordans. But when I first knew him, dude had a whole fleet of shoes. He had, like, every different brand, all these different styles and stuff. He just didn't have J's. He didn't have the big major stuff that people were, were hyping up. But he had a ton of shoes. So it's like, you know, don't don't get it twisted. Just because you you didn't have the J's didn't mean you were no sneakerhead. But y'all but y'all pushing people away from the culture for those for those type of reasons. And that's that's just dumb, man. Again, like I remember like a lot of this stuff that y'all try to clown now, if it's not if it doesn't have a especially if it doesn't have a collab cosign, was the hot stuff. Y'all try to shit on fusions all the time. But where's that energy for the strong witherspoons? Because those are fusions. Oh, well, they just, they look better. Yeah, remember y'all, maybe y'all don't remember a lot of the fusions, especially in the early days, did look pretty good, you know, and they were selling. You go back and watch some of the rap videos from that time frame. You will see many a rapper wearing those fusions. Y'all all try to clown the six rings now. Six Rings was a uh, top selling shoe. So why they keep bringing it back? You know, people love that. People like the idea of a shoe that incorporated history and multi parts. You know, that was fun being able to look at the shoe and figure out what parts of other shoes it took. Again, some of those shoes were ugly. Some. But we are pretending like there wasn't no market for them. Or even like the quote unquote takedown models, you know, like in the Team Jordans. Y'all be trying to clown that. Team Jordans have some of, still have some of the hottest Jordan models that ever came out. You know, and then some of the best players or the dopest players at the time were rocking. I love the, the Team Jordans that Eddie Jones used to be wearing. So this idea that oh it's a teen Jordan like that's whack like no nah, bro like let's let's grow up same Jordan factory you ain't gotta like the style you ain't gotta like everything every brand make because Nike makes some ugly shit sometimes Jordan makes some ugly shit sometimes but they like it you love it let people have their stuff man. We're all human beings. We're all different. Not everybody's the same. Not everybody likes the same anything. And we need to stop shaming people or attempting to shame people for not liking what we like or what people are trying to force on us. And you might say, well, Curtis, they, I feel like they're forcing mids on us. Well, you don't have to like mids, man. Nobody is forcing you to like mids. All I'm asking you is for you to stop trying to shit on people that do like them and try to and stop trying to otherize them and make them out to be something less than the typical sneakerhead because they chose to buy a mid-top Jordan. There's many people that got every type of Jordan in their in they lineup. They got the lows. They got the low fats. They got the mids. They got the highs. You know, some people don't like highs. They don't like the way it feels on their ankle area. And the shin, that's, you know, that's part of the reason why shoe companies have made mids and lows. So to act like that's not a thing and that's not part of the process, again, it's just stupid, man. So I just want us to be better. I want us to be better as a community. You know, so, so the only agenda around mids we need to get rid of is this agenda where Somehow, if you wear mids, you're not real, and you don't deserve respect. Because y'all are sending that energy down to the kids, and kids are growing up with that, 
and you know kids are there's nothing worse than seeing a kid super excited about something and then that excitement be sucked away because the world tried to take it from them and that comes from the fact I've seen kids bullying kids for having the wrong days or having the wrong shoes in general and then even adults that be bullying kids some of you know, doing a, a version of what are those, but not exactly, to kids because they their their parents bought them, you know, some type of Team Jordan or something. You know, y'all gotta stop, man. Y'all gotta stop. Got a three year old daughter, and she's had heat since before she was born. I told it on my IG story the other day. The well, the most important phone posits in my collection are the one C infant phones that I bought before she was born, before she was even even an idea, and that we used to pray over my wife's stomach with a shoe, hoping for our little girl or our child to be healthy and come soon. So she's had all types of heat. But she also gets butterfly shoes. She loves butterflies. She loves unicorns. She's got unicorn. She's got unicorn. What y'all would call eat. So I got some unicorn Converse. But she's also just got unicorn shoes. She's got light up shoes. She's got Minnie Mouse shoes. And you know, and she loves her shoes, just like her daddy. And I'm gonna make sure that she never treat somebody some type of way because they can't get the best shoes or what's deemed the best shoes by society. And I hope y'all, after listening to this, do better to better yourselves and to better the next generations. Because it's just shoes. And there's a lot more important things going on out there. And we don't need to be tearing people down because of their footwear. Unless they wear Crocs. <laughs> All right, so that's going to be the end of the show today. I appreciate y'all listening. Thank you so much. Uh, my name again is That Dude Curtis. You can follow me on Instagram at That Dude Curtis 6. You can follow me at Stay Cop and Kicks on Instagram, as well as Stay Cop and Kicks or That Dude Curtis on Twitter. You can check out my website, StayCopandKicks.com. And I guess I'll probably have a podcast section up soon as I get some episodes under my belt. But again, I appreciate you listening and stay copy kicks. <laughs>